The Destabilizing Heteronormativity project is different from other projects around sexual minorities because it particularly focuses and targets the heterosexual population, meaning people who are attracted to the opposite sex. Um, and this makes the project really unique because in this project, we are trying to shift and change norms in society that says that it is only um, heterosexual people that exists in the world, and particularly in Africa. We have um, a whole range of partners on the project, and each partner determines um, how they want to design their particular area of work, obviously with the overall focus of, of challenging heteronormativity and heterosexual norms and looking at, at destigmatizing um, um, LGBT uh, identities. Well, the DH project is really something different than the way it was done before in Africa, at least. Um, the reason it started is probably a good place to start. And I was uh, in a meeting, I can't say where, in about 2012, and many of my LGBT, my lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender activist friends were complaining that they were starting to receive funding for the movement and that they were receiving great capacity building in areas that they needed it, and that the, the movement was moving forward, but that they were kind of expected to go out and now claim these human rights. And the conversations I was having, there was very much this idea that there were, there were seeds that were being thrown out into hard ground, right? and that they, they couldn't even catch or get any traction. And so, through my conversations with people, I realized that somebody could go ahead and kind of just soften the soil a little bit. And so that's basically what this project is about. It's still led by LGBT people, has been gay, bisexual, and transgender people, and it's working with non-LGBT organizations as well, bringing them into the movement and supporting the movement. But it's really about changing the way that Africans view or think or behave towards people who are not heterosexual or straight or transgender. So the DH program, the idea for the DH program actually came out of the meeting in 2013. So Philippa was there and she really started to brainstorm with a number of people. And so the idea that we really could not let people in the, in the LGBT community be, uh, be the only ones to push and to uh, advocate for their own issues. I mean, we all could see what was happening to this community on our continent. And it was about time we started to build a broader alliance in terms of responding to the violations and the stigmatization, the discriminations that was that is happening and has been happening for a long time on the continent. So the idea really was to get all the um, allies from the um, non-LGBT community. So it's unique because we have this diversity of groups. We have uh, people in, at the highest level of their professions, the um, uh, well-positioned um, people, uh, people who are like leaders in their communities, people with a lot of influence, uh, who may not necessarily have given a thought to the LGBT issues and really have, I mean, it's been like a blind spot for them and just giving them the opportunity to engage around the, the, the kinds of concerns and issues that uh, we, we care about. 
um, and to see how they can be allies and partners. I think, I think that's really a very uh, strong kind of response and approach to broadening um, the, the support base for the LGBT community. It cannot continue to be just the issue or the, the kind of responsibility of the community itself to uh, try to counter the, uh, the, the um, discrimination and the violations that they experience. I think everyone has a responsibility and we, we need to, um, the, the program allows us to um, engage at the highest level possible that we can and on a continent-wide uh, basis, so that's important. Destabilizing heteronormativity as a project uh, made a huge difference in, in the, 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 the fact that the approach was basically an academic one for an academic environment studying uh, you know sexuality in higher education so it became more of an academic uh, project and, 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 and debates that uh, basically opened a lot of people's minds people that consider themselves uh, broad-minded or open-minded about such issues I feel like, you know, when, when it comes to the academic wing of the project, we get to really like look at, um, you know, thought activism, where we're looking at like different paradigms and understanding in an academic way, in a scientific way, these, um, you know, these uh, issues and, you know, our surrounding as, as Africans and being in Africa and what this means for the lived experience of the LGBTI community. Mm, personally, uh, the gender neutral bathrooms have meant a lot, um, specifically when it comes to my safety, um, you know, inclusion, um, just, just feeling like you're understood because, you know, um, its agenda is still very much misunderstood and public spaces are where the most confusion is um, when there's like gender designated bathrooms. So yeah, I, I think safety mostly. One thing that I really like about the Destabilizing Heteronormativity project is how it's by Africans from Africa about Africa and you know, this works really well in terms of dispelling the whole myth of, you know, uh, homosexuality being, being you know, um, an African. That special issue with the South African Journal of Higher Education has now been uh, published. We received confirmation for that special issue. It has 19 um, research papers to bring together 19 research papers in one special issue journal is a very good positive outcome for us. One, because there are not many journals that are open to research papers on sexual orientation and gender identity. And the aim of these research papers is to destabilize heteronormativity and bring research evidence that normalizes homosexuality. And in this case, I'm using homosexuality as an umbrella term to refer to gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, transgender, intersex identities. We focus in the higher education sector and you would expect that the higher education center is liberal, that it is, you know, welcoming, that we are, pro are progressive, that, you know, they have intellectual discussions. And because we are a higher education sector and we rely on science and evidence, you would expect that we now understand sexual orientation and gender identity and what it means. And in fact, that is not the case. And having this special issue and other outcomes such as conference papers that have come from this project in the past three years has been um, a very good outcome for us in terms of influencing the discourse in academia. So the beauty of this project is that we've been able to bring young black scholars into the team who are you know, willing to write about gender identity, sexual orientation. I can safely say probably about 40% or so of the authors in the special issue identify as LGBTI themselves. So we've been able to bring LGBTI voice into this special issue, into our work. And we've been able to support people who are based both in comprehensive universities, 
in research in intensive universities and also in teaching universities. Sex and sexuality has always been a difficult issue in the faith community. And unfortunately, sex and sexuality, they have been demonized by the church as if it's something that we must not talk about, whilst it's a gift from God. So a platform, a platform like destabilizing heteronormativity gives us an opportunity to demystify sexuality. And, uh, and, and the religious leaders appreciate that because we start from the basics of understanding what is sexuality before we move on to sexual orientation, which is a very difficult issue in the faith community. Inerana's involvement uh, started when we became aware that there were some key populations that were excluded within the faith community. Inerana is interfaith, so we work with all faith communities. So we started opening up spaces where we facilitated dialogue between the LGBTIQ community and the religious leaders. So that's how we became um, more involved. But also when we, when we strive for justice, we realize that you can't exclude others. And uh, because we do have LGBTIQ persons in our communities and in our churches, we felt it was important for us to be involved in the promotion of positive theolo theologies so that they can be embraced in the different faith communities. Uh, Destabilizing heteronormativity is meant to challenge cis heteronormativity and heterosexual heteronormativity by engaging in dialogue with people who identify as cisgender and those who identify as heterosexuals to open up the platform for discussion and acceptance of individuals. What I'm most proud about in the Destabilizing Interoperativity project is the development of the skills, individual development of skills and capacity enhancement of the trans community in Southern Africa, whereby we were able to train trans community to lead research, to conduct research. So that's part that I'm very, very proud, proud about because it means in the next steps, if we wish to conduct research, we'll be able to do it ourselves. Not that we'll not ask for assistance from AIDS Accountability International, we'll still do that, but um, that's part of that I'm very, very proud of. This project, the Destabilizing Heteronormativity, um, actually has helped us to firstly uh, begin research around the country. Our initial um, research project covered six countries where we looked at violence and discrimination faced, especially within the health sector, but we are now expanding it to look at 10 countries uh, using 16 organisations, trans organisations from around the region and including Seychelles but expanding it to more than just health, looking at policies, looking at education, looking at culture, looking at a lack of employment and all those sort of things. And this project will go a long way in helping us advocate for, um, for our issues and for our problems, and will also help us to identify areas that we need to tackle and particular laws and policies and um, that we need to speak to with the governments of the, of the, of the 10 countries. The project um, Destabilizing Heteronormativity uh, with AIDS Accountability, uh, it's an important project that um, has allowed us to work with several communities um, in understanding the um, abuse against sexual minorities, including lesbians, gay, bisexual and transgender people, uh, particularly in the way that scriptures are used. It means that we're able to broaden the work that we do. Our target audience are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex people, 
their relatives, friends, parents, families, those who are struggling, you know, with an understanding of how can you be gay and also be a Christian. Community leaders, um, and, 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 and indeed, um, community workers, NGOs that are supporting LGBT people. So the project of DH was so important so that we can begin to understand how to unravel the mysteries of discrimination. There is a lesbian woman in Malawi, um, when we met, she said to me, Jide, I'm 19 years old and I have not been to church for five years. And the single reason she said was that because they wouldn't allow me to wear trousers. It's absolutely petty when you come to think about it. But we still have churches today that hold on to scriptures that says that there are particular attires that women should wear it is so ridiculous. You have put a young person out of church just because of the way that they dress, the way they feel comfortable to dress. But after our program, you know, she was very confident, very bold and ready. She said, I am going back to church and I'm wearing my trousers because I know that God loves me and I'm going there to worship. Our public media campaign is called Who's My Tribe? Um, and you can go to our website on whosmytribe.com. Uh, this particular public campaign is targeted um, at heterosexual people um, across the continent. It's really important for us to work with, with these policy bodies um, to say that they have, um, they have a responsibility as well as um, looking at being accountable to um, LGBT citizens on the African continent. AIDS Accountability International also designs our own interventions around this project, um, which doesn't necessarily f follow very strict funder guidelines. And this is really important uh, to the project because we also run the same principle with our partners on the project. This particular project is funded by the Ford Foundation and what is great about, about the Ford Foundation is that they are flexible in that way, that they allow um, 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 organizations to determine their own path of, of, of intervention. AI particularly focuses on advertising agencies, the a public media campaign, policymakers, as well as collaboration of, of the different partners on the project. Destabilizing Heteronormativity is a project um, that brought together a number of partners from diverse backgrounds, pretty much. And the idea was to have um, a multi-pronged project that questioned binaries. Much of, much of what militates against sexual orientation and gender identity anywhere in the world is social norms that define gender norms, gender roles, binaries around gender identity, gender expressions, um, and sexual diversity. And so with this project, the attempt was to question this, destabilize uh, uh, the very idea of a homogeneity of sexual identity, gender expression. I think the advantage that they bring to this discourse is that the more we're able to have a conversation looking at various spheres of life, the more we have a conversation that's multi-themed and multidisciplinary, the more we're, we're able to connect to other aspects of life that mean things to people. There are people who will be moved by the human rights discourse, and there will be people who will only be moved by a conversation that touches on faith. I think the thing that I'm quite clearly the most proud of is Lucinda Vandenhever, our senior researcher and project manager. She's brought such intelligence and dynamism and enthusiasm and um, passion to the work. And you can have all the ideas in the world, but if you don't have somebody who can make it happen, um, that's probably the first thing. The second thing is I love innovation. and. That I love the fact that we're doing something different and that people said we couldn't do it, we shouldn't do it. 
we couldn't do it like that. And I like the, I like the fact that working in these hard spaces that we've managed to do it. So yeah, that's what I'm most proud of.